just like obviously I sort of uh, do switch it up because it gets boring if you yeah. you can't go out and play exactly the same set every night. But I have certain tunes that I know work well together, so yeah. I quite often go for those and then you know switch it up every every few weeks. You know? My, basically my favourite thing out of doing all of this is like making a tune and then playing it yeah. for the first time or for the first few times is just like yeah, really yeah. exciting because it's like it could either go, the crowd could either go off or it could go completely wrong, do you know what I mean? It's yeah. just, I love that excitement of playing like a new tune for the first time, that's just the ultimate buzz for me, basically, I love it. I was in a lot of bands when I was younger and um, I was into sort of uh, rock music and stuff and basically from that I got into writing and at the same time as, as getting into writing music, I sort of got into drum and bass and uh, people like Chemical Brothers, uh, people like uh, Goldie, all those guys really got me into sort of dance music, electronic music, and it's just been a hobby of mine for ages and it sort of naturally progressed to, to, to a stage where I was sending people out tunes and uh, yeah, it's just, it's kind of gradual, it's, you know, it's very gradual, do you know what I mean? It's been organic for me, it hasn't been like, you know, it wasn't a big master plan, it was just sort of, I just like making music, mostly. I'm starting a live project this year, so that's that's one major thing I'm doing. I'm um, sort of basing around a lot of new technology, I'm kind of basing around me, and a lot of, you know, sort of synthesizers. Things like, I'm even looking at things like um, uh, proximity sensors to control sounds and stuff, so like moving your hand closer to, to objects, you know, controlling, uh, to control the actual sounds you're playing. I, I love the sort of eclectic mu movement within dance music at the moment, so that's something that um, I think Personally, I think that's, that's the future, and it's starting to happen now. People playing all across the board in one set. I love that. So. From DJing, when I started DJing a lot more, your ear gets a lot more tuned into the production and the mix stand. That mix stand is very important in your music and. Um, just you, just as a DJ, you see what things work on the dance floor. I would, I would hate to be a new producer now trying to get in. Yeah, it's, it's get it's so much, so much harder. There's so many more demos to get sent. But I think good music does always find its way through ultimately, and I, I think there's always that equal chance. There's always equal opportunities. So it, it's hard in the fact that you have to hone your sk skills to be at that level. But, you know, if the music's good, people will pick up on it. Nine, the end of the 90s, a lot of music, a lot of drum and bass went really dark. It went really kind of aggressive. And that was fun at first, you know, like it was fun to hear music with that, that aggressiveness. But after a few years, it was like no one, no one had, everybody had run out of ideas. and. <clears throat> the best drum and bass music is always music that's inspired from other music and you put it in that format. As long as it fits the 174 beats per minute, you know, it can be drum and bass in my opinion. And now drum and bass at the moment, in my opinion, it's almost in the same state as it was back then. It's kind of like, it's young, and I see it, I see it as young producers, they're influenced only by drum and bass and they're trying to replicate what I'm doing but it's always going to be a poor imitation of what I'm doing. They're not bringing any fresh ideas to the pot. And it's it's just not good for the music. You know, you have to listen to other stuff and bring it in. So, you know, so much, there's so much other things musically in the world that you can draw from. And, um, you know, I think it's going to reach a point where it gets stale and then it's going to get interesting again, really. What I've been doing a lot recently is using samples of say vocal samples but then getting vocalists in to redo them or do them slightly differently. Um, it all depends really, like you know sometimes a vocal sample can actually s s start an idea so you have this vocal and literally a whole song will emerge from it, you know. You can't stifle your creativity and say I'm not going to use a sample. I spend a lot of time practicing DJing like if it's a Friday night, I'll, I'll spend a good two, three hours going for new tunes, practicing. And I, I can't really tell you how I put it together, but it's a certain mood that I get. Like, you know, you want to start off with a, with a good intro. You know, you know, you don't want to start off with a tune that just starts with a plain beat and just builds up, you know, that's, 
that's kind of boring to me. You want to start off with an atmospheric intro or something that's going to be big, it signals your arrival. And then maybe you, you know you want to throw in something that someone knows. Then I like to mix quite quickly as well and change. It's almost like the MTV generation, uh, and also the technology changed a lot in the last few years. Like the switch to doing everything in the computer. That's what stopped me for a while. I was used to a different way of working. As now I feel like I'm totally up to speed. But um, yeah, I guess I'm a perfectionist with what I do, and it has to feel a certain way. And there was a tune that I did on my album called Gold Rush that I did with the Brooks Brothers. And as a piece of music, it's one of the best things that I've ever written. But the mix down wasn't quite right on it. And I would play it out and it wouldn't have, you know, a hospital going, it's fine, it's fine, you know, like the, And I was thinking, no, this is not right. And I'd play it out and it wouldn't get a good reaction. And we must have mixed it so many times. And eventually we got it to a point where it was was right and that that's the level of perfection that you strive for now it always gets a reaction because the sonic the little effects and stuff they all make they all make a difference Um, I don't know, selling cars, playing football. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, for, like people like Andy C and stuff like that, people who are just known for their DJing, I mean, that's built up over like what, like 10, 15 yeah. years or whatever. So, I mean, to, status like that is, is hard. It would be nice to do more of that, more original work, but it's just it's generally easier to sample stuff. But, I mean, yeah, it's, it's cool with samples as well because you're like, you're quite limited in what you can actually do. So that kind of like forces you to kind of find like new ways to kind of work around it as well. Mm. Yeah, I was playing out your own tunes. That's like the real kind of best. But obviously, like for both of us, the production side of things came first. Yeah. So like we both already got into that, and then like yeah, the thread of playing your own tunes is is, is wicked. Like, I'm much prefer to playing other people's tunes. Yeah, definitely. Like yeah. seeing a crowd. Like, Unless react. you wipe the dance floor. <laughs> yeah, that's and not right. And then you're like, <laughs> yeah, I didn't make this. Back to the studio. <laughs> Yeah, maybe one in every three tunes that we play yeah. out is uh, yeah, one of ours. Quite, quite. Like YouTube and stuff yeah. like that is just unbelievable. Like YouTube's <laughs> definitely the big one for us. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't think about places like MySpace or whatever. Well, we still, ha yeah, we still have that, but like, it doesn't help half as much as YouTube. Like Yeah, like I mean, my MySpace, it's got something like 27,000 profile views, but you can get that many hits on one track on YouTube if it gets uploaded by the right like, place. Yeah, yeah, we've been, because we've been doing it for ages, like we went through still sometimes now like you get you get criticism from people but it used to happen all the time yeah there's quite a few kind of big producers not naming any names no. but uh, they're really kind of like <laughs> harsh about harsh. it and yeah, it's really good because it makes you just like want to just carry on and do better but you should never get disheartened from yeah, what people definitely. say because that's when it's just gets bad and you're just like oh i just want to get him shoot myself <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah don't get disheartened <laughs>